It is a head-to-head-to-head -head -head Dynasty Startup Mock Draft Battle on today's episode of the Fantasy Football Fellas Podcast. Welcome in, Lucas Wenzel, Cameron Morris, Tyler Plath, all with you. We now have landing spots for most, if not all, of the free agents in this year's class. We have rookies coming into the league soon. The NFL Draft is just a month away. They will be included in this mock draft as well. And I'm ready to display my dominance over you two is why I am the best drafter out of the three of us. You're going to eat your words. It's just going to be such a tough day for you. I hope you get sniped with every <laughs> single pick you have. No, I've already had that experience in, in our off-season <laughs> episodes. We don't need to talk about that. Uh, look, instead of talking to the talk, let's walk to walk. Let's get into this mock draft, fellas. <laughs> Dynasty startup mock draft. Here we go. <laughs> Super flex. So two quarterbacks. Tyler is at the 101. I am at the 106. Cam is at the 112. How do you like that? We even have some sound effects to kick off our draft here. Ty, you're at the 101. Uh, who are you going to select here? Because the pick is not incredibly obvious. Uh, no, but kind of it is. I mean, <laughs> super flex. No means, brainer for me. <laughs> uh, well, it is for me too, but super flex means quarterbacks are going to go off the board really quick, really early. There's only one quarterback that is worth the 101. It's not Patrick Mahomes. It's not Jalen Hurts. Even though the tush push is still a legal play, it's not Jalen Hurts. It's not Lamar Jackson, the reigning MVP. It's Josh Allen. Uh, the guy has put up 400 fantasy points in each of the last four seasons. It is really as simple as that. Getting the best quarterback in fantasy football with the first pick makes the most sense. Three out of the last four years, Josh Allen has been the quarterback one overall. The year he wasn't, he was the quarterback two. There, That is a no-brainer there. Joe Burrow goes off the board second. Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, C.J. Stroud. You know, it's really tempting here because I'm looking at the board and it's Lamar Jackson, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, C.D. Lamb. I mean, those are really tempting names. I want to go get an edge at wide receiver, but in a super flex league with Lamar Jackson sitting here at the 106, this is a no-brainer to me. I am going to go ahead and take Lamar Jackson at the sixth pick. Justin Jefferson, Justin Herbert, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, Anthony Richardson all off the board. Cameron, to you at the 112. Uh, you really wanted Anthony Richardson there based on the look on your face. Yeah, that's absolutely ridiculous that he gets taken there. Um, so I, right now what I'm thinking is Trevor Lawrence is an option here. I like Kyler as well. I think those are the two quarterbacks I'm considering. But I'm also considering – Zero QB for the first two rounds and just taking a super um, big, uh, whatchamacallit, super big, what, what am I trying to say? A, an advantage at the other two positions, running back, wide receiver. And that's what I think I'm going to do. So I'm going to go Amon Ross St. Brown, and then I'm going to go Bijan Robinson. And I'm going to take take no QB there. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the way I'm going to go with it. Super whatchamacallit. I don't know Diversified what just happened there. Start. <laughs> Everything just stopped working for me there. Yeah. <laughs> so Cameron did go Amon Ra and Bijan Robinson. Then have Brees Hall, Christian McCaffrey, Trevor Lawrence, Garrett Wilson, AJ Brown off the board. Um, I'm I'm conflicted on my next pick here because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up going Jameer Gibbs. He's the next highest player on the board. Uh, the running back scarcity is real. I kind of want to keep my edge there if I can. I'm looking at potentially doubling up on quarterbacks right away. I don't like doing that typically, mostly because then I get off to a really bad start, you know, at quite literally every other position because I don't have an elite advantage there. And I truly do believe you can win a super flex league if, you know, you have Lamar Jackson and, you know, who's a guy that, you know, is towards the bottom of the, the quarterback rankings here. You know, could you do it with a, like a Baker Mayfield potentially? I think mm -hmm. you can. So I would rather load up on talent now, now that I have for sure my elite quarterback in place. So I'm going to go with Jameer Gibbs. Puka Nakua off the board, Tyreek Hill, Kyler Murray, Justin Fields, Tyler to you, the one-two turn here. I'm guessing you really wanted uh, a bunch of those guys. Now, let's be clear. Justin Fields isn't going to go this high in your Superflex drafts because right now he is the backup to Russell Wilson. But it is what it is. We're going to leave it as is, Ty. Uh, it is it is your pick here. So 
top four players that are on sleepers big board right now, Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy, Jordan Love, Tua Tagovailoa. Um, I think, you know, one of those four quarterbacks makes a ton of sense because after that, there is a pretty significant teardrop. You know, we go then to Jared Goff, Deshaun Watson, Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield, Matt Stafford. Like, I think getting the quarterbacks situated is going to be the first priority with one of these picks because I have the turn. So uh, the quarterback for me, um, I like Dak Prescott but I kind of like Jordan Love a little bit more. Age is on his side. Dak is 30, which, I, look, 30 for a quarterback is not like 33 for a wide receiver, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, I just, I'm a big fan of Jordan Love. I think there's a lot of room for him to get better. He was the quarter, quarterback five this past year, and Dak himself was the quarterback three, so we're, I mean, we're nitpicking at this point, but I just think the ceiling can be higher for Jordan Love than it can for Dak Prescott moving forward. So my quarterbacks are now set. I don't really need to touch them for really the rest of the draft at this point. So now I'm just going to look best player available at just, a you know, one of these playmaking positions. Sam Laporta is the next player. And I, as much as I'm a big fan of Sam Laporta, I'm not really a big fan of taking a tight end in the third round of a startup in Dynasty. And not so, a tight end premium either. Can I add that? This isn't yes. a tight end premium mm-hmm. draft. So uh, boil that in as well. Um, I would agree with your analysis there. Keep going. Yeah, so I'm looking at the running backs and, you know, there is there is some intriguing names. Uh, Travis Etienne, Jonathan Taylor, Kyron Williams even. Those are some very intriguing running back names. But these wide receivers really get, um, they're not dicey. But if you are looking for a stud wide receiver that you can really build your team around. What? <laughs> no, that has nothing to do with you. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Fine. Um, I'm going to go Chris Olave here. I think Olave is super talented. I like the fact that he is only 23 years old. Um, maybe the quarterback situation isn't the best for him because it's Derek Carr, but look, Chris Olave, I like the talent. I like the age just going youth movement really there. And, and I think for the other wide receivers that were available, I think Olave, I liked Olave the best out of all of them. Yeah, you're a jerk because you took off uh, one of my potential options I was supposed to fall to me, which was uh, Chris Olave, Jalen Waddle, or Brandon Ayuk. Uh, because now I'm looking at the board. I need wide receiver. If I pass a wide receiver here, um, I look, I don't want to have scarcity mindset, but um, it, it gets pretty dang thin. What are you putting your hands on your head for? I regret my pick. I know who <laughs> yeah. I actually wanted. You actually wanted Caleb Williams. No, you I want didn't. Marvin Harrison. Jr. I wanted Marvin Harrison. Freaking A, man. Oh, <laughs> See, that's fascinating. I, I I love Marv. I don't know if I would take him yet, though. Ooh. So you guys would. can save him for the next round for me. No. I, I mean, I mean Cam- Cameron's going to take him on the turn. I can't I, that. I'm going to be with honest. where my team is at, I, I need something for sure. If I look in, in Cameron's case, Marv makes perfect sense. Mm. Um, I If I would have taken Jameer Gibbs and I had another wide receiver, maybe I would consider Marv here, but you know, to have Marv lead as my wide receiver one when I haven't seen anything, do I, 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 I would rather have the sure asset right now. That's that's where I'm kind of settling into. Um, man, I I'm torn. I think what I'm going to do is I'm torn between Nico Collins, Michael Pittman, and Drake London. The question is, do I think Nico Collins can keep it up? Um, the I think it's a little too early for him. I'm going to go Michael Pittman. Uh, He just got a fresh contract. It's going to be a target hog with Anthony Richardson. He's clearly the number one there. I know people are going to say, well, what about Jonathan Taylor? I, Yeah. If they're going to throw the ball though, it's going to go to Michael Pittman and I'll, I'll rely on the safe volume young asset there. So Michael Pittman is my wide receiver one. I'm not extremely thrilled. I would be much happier, you know, with a, with an AJ Brown type of wide receiver. But um, the good news is I have a running back for the next three years uh, and most of the other teams in this draft won't. So hmm. like if I lower Dak Prescott, Nico Collins, Kyron Williams, Devonta Smith, go after Cameron uh, two weeks in a row here on the turn. Yeah. Yeah. An unorthodox start. Are you looking at quarterback at all here? I am. And I'm going to, I'm going to go double rookie here. I'm going to go. It. 
I'm going to go Caleb Williams, and then I'm going to go Marvin Harrison. I'm going to be honest. I would take Marvin Harrison right after Garrett Wilson. That is how high I'd go with Marv. Um, I think he's a second-round pick in Dynasty. I think Caleb Williams um, should have been taken at the turn. Um, But, you know, obviously, Sleeper's got them way down on the board, so that's why we're going to kind of have to take them intermittently, um, right? And it's going to be – we'll – mix them in and out because obviously you don't want your whole team being rookies. Um, I mean, they could be, it could be just fine, but <laughs> just for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the upside that both of those bring at this point. Um, DJ Moore was actually the other guy I was thinking about. I'm super high on DJ Moore. Um, so, you know, at your point, Lucas, I, my two probably would have been between DJ Moore and Drake London, um, mm-hmm. which obviously you get that choice again now. So it worked out pretty well to take Pittman um, where you did, but yeah, as far as taking those two rookies, my team's very young to begin with. Um, and if I don't have a quarterback early, I might as well go young and just shoot complete upside with Caleb Williams. Yeah, and I think I, I'm going to wait on quarterback here a little bit more. I, I I do agree. I think Caleb Williams is probably going to end up going, you know, right after the Anthony Richardson range. Um, you know, you could put him in the, the Trevor Lawrence, Kyler Murray range. I think that's where Caleb's probably going to go in most rookie drafts. Yeah, actually, you know what? I take that back. He might even go ahead of Justin Herbert. Mm-hmm. based on the age of the potential upside there yep. in a startup. He might even go as early as that. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I made my decision. Uh, I'm going to listen to my ranks. I have Drake London, two spots ahead of tank Dell in my uh, dynasty wide receiver rankings. Uh, he's got a quarterback. Now he's got competent quarterback playing Kirk cousins. Look, his wide receiver two. Sure. He has Kyle Pitts, but his wide receiver two is Darnell Mooney. I'm not exactly the, the target hog across the field from him that, is going to take away targets from Drake London. So I think he's the wide receiver one there. Incredibly competent quarterback play with Kirk Cousins now. Uh, and I'm content with a, a start of Lamar, Jameer Gibbs, Michael Pittman, and Drake London. DJ Moore went after that. Then Mark Andrews, DK Metcalf. Tied to you, two picks in a row. What are you thinking here? You don't have a running back yet. You're going to zero RB this sucker. You're looking at another wide receiver. Tight end at this point. Where Where are you going? So the one running back that I'm probably looking at the most is James Cook, and I'm a big fan of James Cook. But what I have noticed just looking and doing some research and who Buffalo has been visiting with in the pre-draft process, almost all the bigger power backs Buffalo has at least visited, interviewed, met with in some kind of capacity. That does not necessarily mean that they are going to take one of those guys Um, but I think that is the one thing that was kind of lacking last year for this team was just a power running game. Like James Cook did very, very well for himself, but they had Latavius Murray as like their power back. And I think they want to get younger. They want to bring in some fresh juice as a, for a power back. So I'm not a huge fan of James Cook because that means touches could be taken away from him. So I'm looking wide receiver, still not. A huge fan of the tight end at this point. So I'm looking wide receiver and I'm like, T Higgins is there. Zay flowers is there. Jordan Addison, JSN is there. So three rookies from or three sophomore wide receivers mm-hmm. plus Rasheed Rice. I didn't even see him there. And I'm like, you know, all those guys are really intriguing and you guys might think that this is a reach. So let's have the discussion. I'm going to go Malik neighbors and I'm going to go Roma Dunze back to back. Because I think those two wide receivers could have significantly better careers and upside than some of the guys that were on that board, right? As I listed them off with Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison, JSN, all that kind of stuff. So it may seem like a lot to invest in some rookie wide receivers that we still don't even know what their situation is going to be at this moment. But I am just a, I am so, I am a believer in their talent and in their upside that they will land in a good situation. And hopefully that means then good fantasy points down the road. But I'm going to go Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunes. I criticize it all you want. But no, again, I, you're the worst. I think that's perfect. I, no, you suck. <laughs> no, because I, really I, like ta- I was going to take Malik Neighbors. You didn't even bring his name up. I'm thinking, great, you get Malik Neighbors to slide back to me because he's not high enough. And, oh, my gosh, I would have loved the start of Michael Pittman, Drake London, Malik Neighbors. Um, to no avail, though. So I, I do – I like I like both of those picks. Mm-hmm. And if you're high enough on Roma Dunze and taking him ahead of a Rasheed Rice T. Higgins who went next off the board, I you go with your gut, man. You go. You, yep. you got to call your shot there. So 
I think that those are two perfectly fine picks. Jared Goff, James Cook off the board next. Uh, TJ Hawkinson is here. Kyle Pitts is super intriguing as well. The enigma of that man. Um, Kyle Pitts wins this game of chicken right now. I'm not going to take him because I made my decision with Drake London. Fair I'm, and I'm not thrilled. I'm not thrilled with the running backs. I mean, I know Isaiah Pacheco or Rashad White is there, but I'm going to draft those guys and I'm going to look to sell them one year after I draft them, right? So I want to play a little bit more of a longevity game there if I can. Um, so what I'm going to do is because wide receivers have a longer shelf life, I'm going to take another wide receiver and I'm going to check my rankings here just to make sure um, I, I take my highest ranked one. Uh, and out of Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers and JSN, I do have Jordan Addison ranked the highest by one spot ahead of Zay Flowers and who did go off the board next. So three young wide receivers to kick off my draft with Lamar Jackson. And now I'm kicking myself because I should have taken Zay Flowers to stack with Lamar Jackson. I kind of forgot I had Lamar. I'm going to be perfectly honest. So Ooh, if I could go mistake. back and redo, that was a rookie mistake. Uh, you can, Cameron, you can cut that post edit, right? You can, <laughs> you can tweet that for us. Um, Zay Flower should have been my pick there. I ended up going Jordan Addison. But TJ Hawkinson, Deshaun Watson, Saquon Barkley, Isaiah Pacheco, Cameron, to you next. Only one quarterback, yeah. two wide receivers and a running back. Yep. Are you looking at another quarterback here? I am a little bit, but I think the game of chicken ends here. I'm going to take the plunge, double up on the Falcons offense. I'm going to go in with my tight end, number four, Kyle Pitts. Um, I think he is just just the prospect of him, especially the way I'm building my team, right? I'm I'm building it up for uh, other than probably Amon Ra and B. John Robinson. Lots of unknowns, lots of upside. Um, you never know what's going to happen. So from the quarterback position, then I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to dip back into the rookie, oh. rookie little portal here. And uh, I'm going to go with Jaden Daniels. And the reason I'm I, too many games with you too. <laughs> and the reason I like Jaden Daniels so much is because we think of Justin Fields, who was not a great passer by any means. Like, I think that's just, you know, who Justin Fields was. This Lucas gets absolutely sniped right there um, with, I'm not even going to speculate which player he wanted. Um, probably Devonte Adams, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm building my team, you know it. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jaden, you know, like, you know, Justin Fields wasn't great and still put up at least 18 fantasy points per game in his worst season. So with Jaden Daniels, you know, assuming using those legs, that's probably, you know, close to his floor coming into the league. The player I wanted was Dalton Kincaid. I really wanted to take a, a nice plunge on, on the second year leap from him with no Gabe Davis in that offense anymore. Yeah, Curtis Samuel is there, but I think Dalton Kincaid could really emerge as as the sidekick that, that Stefan Diggs needs in that offense. So he did go after Jane Daniels. You got Jackson Smith and Jigba Rashad White, Stefan Diggs, Devontae Adams off the board. Do you dip into the rookie port pool for your tight end here? Yeah, I'm strongly considering it. I'm I'm very strongly considering it. And I think mm -hmm. I'm going to at this point. I think I am going to take Brock Bowers here. Uh, just the highly it. touted. Well, <laughs> you, you're thinking Theo Johnson, <laughs> Theo Johnson, my beloved prospect. No, um, I, I, I will take Brock Bowers there because I think he, he, he's above the tier of Dalton Kincaid. And there, there's a real possibility he lands in a really nice situation. If the New York Jets stick a 10 and take Dalton or take uh, Brock Bowers there, excuse me, gets a year of Aaron Rodgers, gets that second year leap then as well. Uh, we, we, I'm confident in my wide receivers where I'm willing to take a chance and a stab at, at a rock Bowers. I know I don't have a second quarterback yet, but again, with how I like to build my super flex teams, I'm fine. Just kicking the can down the road on another quarterback. I don't, I, I don't feel a need to go out and grab one right now out of desperation because nine, none of them are going to be the, the difference maker that I need in a given year. Uh, it just doesn't make sense for me. So Ty, back to you at the turn after Jane Reed Debo, Josh Jacobs, Mike Evans go off the board. Uh, this board is really gross now. Um, not not a huge fan. Um, I do have my three wide receivers. Um, I don't know if this was mentioned, but we are doing two flex spots as well. So we've got two flexes and a super flex. So wide receiver definitely could be a play here and just you know build up on pass catchers and stuff like that. 
Um, but I do need a running back, and I have a feeling that after really this round, you know, I'm not really going to get some. I shouldn't say quality, but the running backs that could put up points for me will be gone at this point. So I'm going to take one of them. I'm going to go down to the board a little bit, and I'm going to go with Joe Mixon for one of them because <laughs> he scared me for a second. Okay. Scared me for a second. What? You were you thought I was going to say Jonathan Brooks. You thought I was going to say Trey Benson. No. Um, no. No. Jalen Warren. You, you <laughs> shut your mouth. You shut uh, your mouth. He's my other. Oh, no, um, no, no, don't let him put thoughts into your head. <laughs> no, Who not, are you going to take? Gonna t- no, let me. So Joe not Mixon going to Houston now. Oh, well, no, um, no, Joe Mixon going to Houston now. Really like, yes, he's 27 now. A lot of tread on his tires, but it's a matter of just being in a really good offense that is Houston, right? He's going to benefit from that. So Mixon will be one of my running backs. And now I'm kind of looking at what else I could do. And I'm still thinking running back. It's not Jalen Warren. Don't worry, Lucas. I'm not going to do that to you. Um, you know what? I really do not care about the age of this guy. I just think the 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 fact that he's on this offense and he's going to go this late in drafts is just kind of a steal. I don't care how old he is. I don't care the usage. Like, I give me Derrick Henry. Like I know I'm going to veteran. Why was I'm not where I thought you were not going. who I was thinking. I don't hate I it. I was going to go Alvin Kamara. That, no, David I, was, Montgomery. That's, I thought oh. you were, I thought you were going to go Monty there as well. No, I, the thing with the thing with Monty, I, I'm kind of scared with just how they use Gibbs and Montgomery towards the end of last season. And Gibbs was playing really, really well. Mm-hmm. So it's not that I don't think David Montgomery isn't going to have a role at all in this offense. It's just not what it was going into last year. So I looked then at Derrick Henry and I see that Lamar Jackson himself. Yes, he still put up decent rushing yards. He did not put up major rushing touchdowns. And the fact that they got Gus Edwards to get 13 rushing touchdowns last year, like you have to think that they're going to use Derrick Henry a ton towards the goal line. So Yes, two older running backs, um, but this is why we do Dynasty. I'm getting guaranteed points. I'll figure out the running backs in future years. Um, you get two stud running backs. Two, I'm not going to try to go too too deep into going young with my running backs. Just stay stay with what's familiar for me there. So All right. That's interesting, though, that you went Chris Olave, Malik Neighbors, Roman Dunze two unproven wide receivers yet you go two pillars at running back that that intrigues me a bit um can maybe recap that as the draft goes on and how that maybe changes things for you but uh george kittle george pickens deandre swift chris godwin go afterwards i i really didn't care if he took jalen warren because the guy i actually want to take is two years younger than jalen warren I think has a more clear path to leading his team in touches ahead of Jalen Warren. Now the offense might not be great, but your favorite team I'm building with how I'm building my team. I'm looking at young guys, right? I'm looking to take a chance on younger, younger players here. So I'm going to take Javante Williams here. Oh, Oh, running back too. Ooh, what, did you guys think I was going Jonathan Brooks? Ty J Spears. Yeah, Ty I thought J. You were Spears. Going. No, let's see. No, no, no. But but he has Tony Pollard. I'm looking okay. clear path to touches. All I right. think that's too murky for me. Jalen Warren with Najee Harris, right? I, too murky there for me. Javante Williams. I see a lot of hype around Jaleel McLaughlin. Yeah, nice little player. But you know, we're looking at Jalen Warren potentially being a one B. At Ty J Spears being a one B. Javante Williams to me is for sure the one A. And has the clearest path to touches out of the three of them. Um, so I, I am going to go Javante there. Second year off of his eight, or second full year, excuse me, off of his ACL tear as well. We should get an increase in production and efficiency there. I, I'm liking a nice little bounce back here potentially for Javante and to take as my running back too after loading up on the young talent that I have. I'm very very pleased with that. He was Bryce, the other he, running back I was thinking about because I was like, again, I was wondering reason. that. Yeah, I was wondering that. Uh, Bryce Young, Alvin Kamara, Najee Harris, Christian Kirk, Cooper Cup. The next slew of picks. Cameron, do you on the turn here after drafting your first tight end and your second quarterback last round? 
Yeah, I am have decided I'm going to hero RB it. Bijan is going to be my pillar. I will figure out the running back position later, whether that's going real young, whether that's taking, you know, a Nick Chubb later down, um, taking a shot on there. Um, and so I'm looking at the wide receiver position right now because I got my tight end. I got my two quarterbacks. And my first one, you know, is a guy I've gotten back in on after being as far out as you could possibly be last oh, year. Geez. And it's Christian Watson. I, yep. And it's just, especially like, like I said, last round, like it's, I'm playing for upside here. Christian Watson's got a ton of upside for a guy you're getting, you know, at the end of the seventh round, he's younger. Um, and you know, we've, we've seen him, you know, put up good numbers. We saw, we don't really have a true wide receiver one in green Bay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to complete a stack here, a perspective. Like, I don't know for sure if it's a stack, but I'm going to, I'm going to hope that it is and take Terry McLaurin. To go with Jaden Daniels, because I think Jaden Daniels goes to the commander. So um, I'm hoping for that stack, but filling out that wide receiver room, having Terry as my wide receiver four or three, depending on where you put him and Christian Watson, I'm very, I'm a very big fan of. I, I feel like my team's feeling very full right now. Um, just having to figure out that last running back position. But yeah, I, I like being able to take those two right there. I'm in a predicament. That's where we like to see. <laughs> sucks to be you <laughs> Amari Cooper, Ty J Spears, Brian Robinson Deontay Johnson, Travis Kelsey all next off the board this is where I want to take another quarterback you probably should <laughs> this is a this, so, so here I'm, I'm looking at two totally opposite players I'm looking at Kirk Cousins who doesn't have many years left, but is very clearly the better quarterback than Will Levis. Mm. Will Levis, rookies. 24. I mean, you could dip into a Drake May here, depending on how confident you are in him as a prospect. The thing I don't like about Kirk Cousins here is that he does not fit the roster construction of my team. And do I think Will Levis can end up being the better quarterback in the NFL than Drake May? That I don't think. I am going to take Drake May here uh, as my second quarterback. I, again, with how young my team is, and as Tyler gets sniped on Monty. Love to see it. You love to see it. Um, I just, Drake May is going to be the better quarterback prospect, I think, long term, or the better quarterback in the NFL long term than Will Levis is. So here I think Drake May has a better chance of landing in a favorable scenario, whether if he lands in Washington or Minnesota, I'm good with that. New England is where I get is where I get scared, which is why I personally don't like doing my startups until I know where the rookies land. But you know, some leagues uh, like to have a little bit of fun and add that boiled risk in uh, and, and do it before you know rookies are are even landing or in their landing spots in the NFL. All right, I got a question now. Kirk Cousins yeah. is there on the board. When it comes back around, are you considering Kirk at all? At that, point, would. at that point, I would. At that point, I would to build a bridge. But I, I, I want to build out my depth more before I even think about a third quarterback. For sure. Yep. Th that's the only downside of waiting on a quarterback this long, right? Is like you get better upper tier players than, than some of these other teams here. Uh, but you might have to burn a few a few rounds in a row on quarterbacks. It's the only downside. For sure. So, Ty, after you got sniped on David Montgomery, well, where are you well, looking it, to go? Well, it wasn't, I mean, it was Montgomery, but it was more so Keenan Allen than it was David Montgomery. He was going to um, turn and, and go, 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 go towards the H movement. Now he's well, not an ageist. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. We are, we are uh BPA baby. Yeah. BPA. Well, <laughs> <been so>. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with a running back here. Who's a little bit younger than the other two guys. Um, and you might think, you you two can see the board so you're like oh that's Jalen Warren no I do not want to play the Arthur Smith game again this year like <laughs> that is I you know I got burned by it with Drake London last year but even like just watching from afar because I didn't have really any B. John Robinson shares didn't really have any Tyler Algier shares the way that he like used both in different games in different ways Hated it. I would have hated to be a manager of one of those two kids of uh, those two guys because you had no way of predicting what mm -hmm. was going to happen. So I'm going to go with Ramondre Stevenson as my running back three I like guy that. that has PPR upside. Yes, they did sign Antonio Gibson, but I think Ramondre 
is still relatively, you know, he, he does not have a ton of tread on his tires. And that is a very popular saying now when it comes to running backs, but they, this team is going to want to run the ball. That's why they hired their offensive coordinator, Alex Van Pelt, who literally first thing he said, our identity is going to be in the run like that. Yeah, give, that's just a touch of saying at that point. So getting him as my running back three, I feel pretty good about that. Now I'm looking wide receiver because I need a, a, an option outside of Olave neighbors and Odunze. And this is when I wish I had Keenan Allen because that's just points. And that is just what I need. Um, and look, Jahan Dotson's right there, but again, I need points. I need points. I like the, I like the idea of a guy like Jahan Dotson. Maybe he's who Lucas is looking for with his next pick because he does need another wide receiver as well. Um, <laughs> he's not scared. He's not scared. <laughs> Since birth, I, I haven't been scared. Gosh, this guy, I'm looking at Hollywood Brown. No, don't you dare. That's the name I was actually considering. Now you got to do it. I was, I it, was strongly it, it, considering Hollywood Brown going just with the Chiefs. It's Josh Downs, Calvin Ridley, Corlin Sutton, which, hey, I mean, Corlin Sutton is also a, an intriguing name, but um, sorry, Lucas. You're keeping people in suspense here. Just just make a pick. You want Hollywood Brown. I'm sorry. No, you're just stop. No, you're not. I, I am. No, you're I, not. I, 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 not I waltzed into it and did not think that you were actually looking at Hollywood Brown, but here we are. I waltzed into it and I really just wanted to drag it out because I, I just want people to listen longer and keep Lucas in suspense. And no, it's okay. You can just say you wanted to screw me over. I, it's it's no problem. It really isn't. It's no problem. It really isn't. It's no problem, uh, brother. Look, while I'm trying to decide what wide receiver decision I want to make, uh, why don't we. Uh, Today's podcast episode is brought to you by our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Now, we love Underdog. It is the easiest place to play best ball formats, and they even have their own form of player props called Pick'em. You can make up to 20 times your money on a single night by correlating props together. Two picks will triple your money, three will six times it, four will ten times it, and five plays that all hit will multiply your entry by 20. You can even place insurance on your picks too, so if only four of your five props hit, you still get ten times your entry. And if you use our code FELLOWS when signing up, Underdog is going to double your first deposit up to $100. Ready, we are back. I'm on the clock here. We got three wide receivers: Michael Pittman, Drake London, Jordan Addison. Two running backs: Jameer Gibbs, Javante Williams, Lamar Jackson, Drake May, and Brock Bowers as my tight end. I am looking at a wide receiver here. And after you all listen to to a word from our great friends over at Underdog Fantasy, I have come to a decision. Yes, brother. <laughs> I am going to take. I am going to take Jahan Dotson here because he does fit the construction of my team, right? I'm looking at young wide receivers. I'm looking at guys who possess upside. Jahan Dotson, after his rookie season, I was all in last year. I'm I'm going right back to Jahan Dotson, man. I'm still a believer in the talent. If they do get a Jane Daniels, if they do get a Drake May, uh, I think Cliff Kingsbury is going to utilize the talent of Jahan Dotson. So to have him as my wide receiver four, I am I am relatively Pleased at that point. Tony Pollard, Josh Downs, Calvin Ridley, Kirk O'Chains, and Baker Mayfield. Cameron, to you, you were bummed that you missed out on someone. I'm struggling to figure out who it was. Were you going to go another quarterback there? I was. I was going to go Kirk there, um, especially having Pitts and Bijan. You know, I, I, I love a little stack myself and just give more stability to that, you know, playing upside just because, you know, if Jane Daniels comes out and all of a sudden they're like, hey, we got to sit him, you know. Would like to have Kirk, but you know, we pivot, we pivot and we make things happen. I got to be honest. Everything is disgusting. Um, so I might mosey on over to our rookies here. Um, and one rookie I kind of like, um, oh. I'm going to be honest is, uh, I've Brian talk about many rookies, Brian Thomas. Um, there we go. Oh, just, just to get it. We're, we're going strictly upside. So I think I'm going to take him at wide receiver here. Um, and then I'm going to go back and I, I'm going to, I'm going to climb the age tree and I'm going to go with our, uh, 
a fossil. No, I'm just kidding. He's not a fossil. It's a running back position. No. <laughs> I'm going to go with Nick Chubb um, and just bank, hope, hope, you know, we're hoping for the best there, right? He's coming off an ACL. He's 28. Um, but I am taking him in the 10th round. So, I, you know, understanding that, hey, I'm going to have to take a couple more running backs here. He's not going to be a reliable running back too. But knowing how good Nick Chubb is, I'm not going to put it out of the realm of possibilities that he comes back and is 90% of his old self, right? Uh, his first year back. So I like Nick Chubb um, in the 10th round. Jake Ferguson, Will Levis, Dallas Goddard, James Connor, Roshan Johnson. I think the team, the thing to point out with Nick Chubb too, Cameron, is that he's your second running back. Yep. And the guys you're looking at at this point are just not. No. Not all that fascinating of names and guys that even have a remote chance of making a top 20 comeback mm -hmm. at the running back. Maybe Raheem Mostert's on the board, but yeah. You got Devon mm -hmm. H in there. There's always injury risk. Mostert's there, so. 32. Yeah. You know, like maybe one more year. Maybe. If you get two out of Raheem, I mean, that's fantastic. Like, you know, that's more than you can ask for. So, yeah, it, it definitely gets gross once you, you know, I mean, even this last round, Aaron Jones, Jalen Warren, Austin Eckler, Tony Pollard, like that's not exactly, you know, sexy names at the running back position. Former sexy names at the running back position, yeah. but not exciting. That is that is for sure. Uh, so I am on the clock here. I am going to dip into the veteran pool as well. I'm going to take my my uh, my doppelganger, my brother in crime, Matt Stafford. <laughs> uh, everyone in the comments oh, doesn't look like Matt Stafford. I thought you were going to say DeAndre Hopkins after you said doppelganger. <laughs> what? <laughs> do I? Do I? I don't. Know. I don't even have that on here. I, I thought I had a, a what to drop on here, but I don't. I'm going to move on from that comment. Um, my lookalike is Matthew Stafford. Everyone in the comments seems to, to point that out on our shorts. So. Or Cooper Cup. Or apparently Cooper Cup, too. I, I think that's... Julian so Edelman. Uh, Ju yeah, right. Can we... Not Hunter Renfro, though. He doesn't have a beard. No. Nope. Um, but I, Matt Stafford is a common one. Uh, look, that's simply just an insurance policy on, mm -hmm. on Drake May. And at this point, again, I'm not, I'm not thrilled with anyone on the board, really. The wide receivers, maybe, but... I know I need another running back, but again, no, nobody is exciting me here. Nobody is exciting me. So uh, I'm fine taking a shot on, on Matt Stafford there. Not even a shot, but just an insurance policy for Drake May. Uh, you know, if he doesn't you know, hit the ground running in the NFL right away. Jamison Williams, Jerry Judy, Evan Ingram, Romeo Dobbs. Who are you after, Ty? You like had a very Evan nice Ingram. Oh, Evan Ingram. I don't have a tight end. And the team that has Sam freaking Laporta took him. Why does that make zero Evan, sense? But whatever. That's an L. Uh, big L for you. Makes me happy. Warms my heart. <laughs> Two on the turn here, Ty. Who are you going with? Uh, I'm going to get my third quarterback here. Even though I could probably wait, I just know that there are going to be zero quarterbacks after this. Um, and I'm making sure that I'm not missing like any of the rookies, like Penix, Bo Nix. We took the big three. Oh, McCarthy. JJ McCarthy is still here. Oh, Good McCarthy here. I don't hate that. Bank on him going to the Vikings. And you he, also have Josh Allen, Jordan Love. Yeah, so you don't need him to start. Yeah. I Not that we're I, trying to talk into making your pick or anything, but that seems like the obvious one here based on the construction of your team. No, and it, I mean, it is. Um, the other the other quarterback that I thought about was Rodgers, just because just getting points now. I mean, my yeah. team is pretty much win now, right? So Rodgers really? would make sense to that, but. You think, um, I see. I think I think Malik Neighbors and Romo, Romo Dunze don't make your team win now. Like that, you like threw off your balance at the running back position, which is why I was really curious why Joe Mixon. I get because he signed a massive contract, appears to be the running back one in Houston for you know next few years. But then you went Derrick Henry. I'm like, wait, well, hold on. <laughs> make that make sense. I, I, I think it's just more so because I believe neighbors on a dunes I can hit the ground running. Okay, that's fair. Um, like yeah, neighbors. The the opportunities for him to be like the clear cut wide receiver one. Same with the dunes. I really for that matter are kind of slim. They're not as good as Marvin Harrison, who is likely going to Arizona where they have zero wide receivers. Right. But I, again, I think talent wise for both of those guys, they warrant enough usage and targets and volume to still be very, very good fantasy wise in year one, year two and so on and stuff. So, um, now I'm kind of stuck again because 
like I need a tight end and just knowing sleeper, I'm not going to get a good tight end because they're all going to go within the next round or two, because for whatever reason, sleeper bots need two top, t- you know, two good tight ends. Obviously. So Obviously. we all knew that time. What the heck? Yeah. God, you're just behind the ball. Come on. <laughs> so these, the two tight ends that I'm looking at Cole Komet, because I think the bears, you know, with Caleb Williams coming in, they are going to be a very good offense. And again, just by being a part of that offense, he's going to be good as well. But my actual guy is going to be Dalton Schultz. Ooh, um, that stinks. Three year extension with the Houston Texans, 27 years old. Like I, I think he's the best one that's still on the board. So that's who I wanted. That's who I thought was going to fall to me. He jerk. Uh, I was really hoping Michael Mayer would make it back to me. He would have been strong consideration for this pick, but uh he's not anymore uh here we go i'm dipping into the rookie pool again you wouldn't dare um i i would dare i would dare ad mitchell baby ad mitchell attaway oh no (laughs) (laughs) got him got him attaway that really sucks that's who i wanted he jerk jonathan brooks uh so shallow I'm so shallow on, on running back here. I know Jonathan Brooks is going to have to sit a year ACL tear. He's not going to hit the ground running in the NFL. He's going to need a year of recovery. I look my running back room. I, I better hope you know, Jameer Gibbs doesn't tear his ACL or anything this year. Cause right now my, my running back room is, is two thirds ACL tears. But if Jonathan Brooks didn't have that injury, he's the clear cut running back one in this class there's no debate the only reason why we're having a debate on whether it's trey benson or whether it's bucky bucky freaking irving um and not jonathan brooks is because of this injury he'll translate just fine in the nfl he just has to find a team that'll be patient with him for a year so he can step in and take the reins in year two pat fryermuth cole Komet, jacoby myers luke musgrave elijah moore go next Cameron back to you we're about to kick off the last three rounds here after this pick why don't we uh wrap this puppy up strong keep it short sweet here who are you looking to go with I'm guessing another running back because mm-hmm. the running backs are Bijan Robinson and Sir Nicholas Trump yeah and uh I'm gonna be honest I wanted Jonathan Brooks but I'm actually kind of happy because what I really wanted it's Trey Benson, was Trey Benson. Trey Benson. Oh, but I knew Jonathan Brooks was the right pick so I'm happy that you allowed me to do this I, I think Benson's gonna be it find a you know at least a very solid role i think as his floor in the nfl i mean he tested extremely well he looked good in college um you know maybe a couple things you know lacking that you you would like to see a little bit more but he's gonna be a day two pick um same with jonathan brooks and i think he'll find his way into an offense um and be used you know relatively well this season i then look at the rest of the running backs um just veteran wise and it is so so disgusting it's really bad. I, I just want to read you guys real quick. I'm going to real quick. The list of names that sleepers got for me here. Raheem Mostert, Chubba Hubbard, Chase Brown. <laughs> Chubba. This man said Chubba. It is Chuba. Chubba. Chubba. Put some respect on his name. Chuba. Chuba Hubbard. Chubba Hubbard. It, Chuba <laughs> brother. Um, Kendra Miller, Tyler Elzier, Damian Pierce, Antonio Gibson, Devin Singletary. And Zamir White. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. Um, and you know what? I don't want any of them, but I'm going to take Raheem Mostert and just go old at the running back position um, yes. there and, you know, just let it fall back to Lucas with whoever oh, he wants. Oh, golly. Who do you want now? You're no, like that, so. I wanted cool. Chase Brown. Oh. Zamir White. I'm taking Zamir White. And I wanted Zamir, Zamir White. That was my other plan. <laughs> I know Alexander Madison is in town, but let's be honest. I think Zamir White might actually be the better running back than Alexander Madison. Oh, I think he's definitely the better running back. The worry for me is they draft someone. Yeah. Sure. But at this point, who? Yeah. Wh- which one of these other teams aren't going to draft somebody? That's true. I mean, you have Khalil Herbert. Chicago already has DeAndre Swift, A.J. Dillon. Uh, Josh Jacobs is in town. Devin Singletary. Sure, he might be the guy, but it's not like I don't I think the Giants yeah. could take a could draft someone in the next coming years as well. Damian Pierce now has Joe Mixon. No, I, definitely worth Tyler Algier shot. has Bijan. Chuba, he might be the guy there, but I, that ain't no guarantee. So, uh, yeah, I'll take Zamir White, who I think, again, Young has the clearest path to, to RB1 touches, if I had to guess. Yeah. Quentin Johnston, Kendra Miller, Traylon Burks, Gabe Davis to you, Ty. Um, dang, yeah, I wanted Zamir White and Chase Brown. 
Um, so that kind of stinks for one of my running backs. Um, wide receivers. You know what? I'm going to... Mm, gosh, this got real ugly real quick. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go A.D. Mitchell. <laughs> You deserve that. <laughs> um, sorry, brother. Um, and then with my next pick, I'm not feeling the need for a tight end. I don't need to roster two tight ends. Um, yeah, I need to go running back. Um, John, I look at Devin Singletary with the Giants, and I'm just like, that could be touches, but I feel like the Giants could also bring in another running back in the draft. Um, so I I'm gonna dip in the in the rookie pool again, and I'm gonna go Jalen Wright. Uh, dude is explosive, has a ton of breakaway, high end speed. Um, he's going to be pigeonholed into a very specific role in the NFL. He's not gonna be a bell cow by any means, but uh. I think he could land with a very good team in a pass catching role. And who knows, maybe he sees his way onto the field because his, you know, one of his best traits is the fact that he can pass protect and teams value that in running backs these days. So who knows just taking the shot on the guy like Jalen, Wright. There's no reason for you to take AD Mitchell there. You just want to piss me off. <laughs> I've been waiting wait. on, can I, can I just say this real quick? Once Brian Thomas and A.D. Mitchell have their landing spots, they are going to go much earlier than this. Uh, so this is why A.D. Mitchell a secret for as long as I could here. I yeah. wasn't going to bring his name up because I, I I almost took him. Instead of Matthew Stafford, I almost took A.D. Mitchell there. And I just I should have done it. Should I should have done it. Instead, so... I got cute. Tried to play as long of a game as I could. I got burned. Yeah. Um... A.D. Mitchell is like outside of the big three. He's my favorite receiver in this class. I love A.D. Mitchell, man. Uh, If he ends up in a good offense, which he likely will, because I think he does go late first round. Oh, brother. I mean, here's here's the thing. He could end up with the Bills. And guess who I have? I have Josh Allen. So, yeah. yeah. So, Chuba Hubbard. Go ahead, Cam. Oh, you can read off who went. And then I was going to say Chuba Hubbard, Tyler Algier, Tucker Craft, Antonio Gibson. I ended up taking Marvin Mims. Took a shot on the young wide receiver, too, in Denver, even though they don't have a quarterback. Dontavian Wicks, Rashad Bateman, Tank Bigsby, Ty Chandler, Devin Singletary, then finally went off the board. Uh, Cameron, uh, your last two picks. Went yeah. High- um, you know, I'm assuming I don't need starting quarterbacks moving forward after this year, but this year, you know, depending on how play goes, maybe maybe you throw someone in there. That's what Rodgers is, right? He's a one, maybe two year at most kind of pick. And then just adding Blake Corum again, um, just to get more running back depth because, you know, I only took one quarterback until the last five rounds of this draft. So just, you know, throwing the darts, old guys, young guys, seeing, you know, seeing what works, hoping he goes to the Chargers, gets Jim Harbaugh to just run him into the ground. Um, is what I'm hoping there. So I, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, I don't I don't blame you for taking a shot at Blake Corum in the final round here. Jonathan Mingo, AJ Dillon, DJ DJ Fierce, Damian Fierce, excuse me, Khalil Herbert, Rashid Shahid. Um there's a lot of different guys I'm kind of looking at here. There's Gus Edwards still on the board who could have touches. Zach Moss is an interesting name in Cincinnati. I could get insurance policy in Vegas with Alexander Madison. You got uh, where? Who was the other name I was just looking at? There's another name I was looking at now. Well, I think I was thinking like a Bucky Irving here as well. If I wanted to go another rookie, I'm going to go ahead and take Zach Moss. I I I think Cincinnati could definitely draft a running back, but this is for sure like a one year rental on Zach Moss. And uh, when running backs are are more abundant uh, of higher caliber in next year's NFL draft. In my rookie draft, I'll likely look to just target running back then. So, uh, Elijah Mitchell, Alexander Madison, Ezekiel Elliott, Chikakonkwo, Ty, the last pick in our draft. Is my draft darling this year. Oh, he's Vlad McConkie. Yeah. 
it's Lad McConkey. I think he finds a good landing spot. He's just going to get peppered with targets because he can route run till. I, I, he, He's the best route runner in this class. I'll say it like he is. He's better than Malik Neighbors, better than a Dunesay, better than Marv. Like Lad is the guy. So I he's my guy. And I just I had to I had to take him had to. So let's wrap it out from the 101, the 106 and the 112. Tyler, why don't you go ahead and give us a recap of your team quick? Yeah, first two picks went with quarterback with Josh Allen and Jordan Love, then went three straight wide receivers, Chris Olave, Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunze. Needed some points in production at the running back spot, so I went veteran route with Joe Mixon, Derrick Henry, Ramondre Stevenson, and then just looked best players in best situations. Went Hollywood Brown, J.J. McCarthy, under the assumption that he goes to a good spot like the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Dalton Schultz is my tight end, then A.D. Mitchell, Jalen Wright, and Lad McConkey. In my draft from the 106, I started with Lamar Jackson. I decided to kick the can down the road on quarterback for a while and went Jameer Gibbs to get my elite running back. I went three straight wide receivers, Michael Pittman, Drake London, Jordan Addison, all young guys who uh, I really, really do like. Then went Brock Bowers to get my young tight end. Javante Williams to get my running back to, again, he's only 23. That just shocked me. He is, that is, he crazy. is so young crazy and- young. Uh, Drake may then uh, praying that he ends up in either Washington or Minnesota. New England trades out of that three pick potentially he ends up in new England. It's all right. I got his insurance policy two rounds later, but went Jahan Dotson before then, then went with my doppelganger, Matt Stafford, according to all of you on the social medias. Then went Jonathan Brooks, Amir white, Marvin Mims and Zach Moss to round out my draft and Cameron from the one twelve, bring us home. Yeah, I skipped out on quarterback first two rounds when Amon Ross St. Brown and B. John Robinson then came back and got Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison. Probably won't go that late in most dynasty drafts, but the fact they were there, I had to take them. Uh, then took Kyle Pitts and Jaden Daniels, you know, keeping with the youth movement, um, high upside, three three wide receivers in a row, Christian Watson, Terry McLaurin, and Brian Thomas. And then I needed running backs, so I went Nick Chubb, Trey Benson, Raheem Mostert, just hoping, you know, to find points somewhere. Aaron Rodgers then um, for a little more stability, excuse me, at quarterback and Blake Corum to finish it out. So there you have it. We'll post these teams on our socials. FF fellas on Twitter, the FF fellas on Instagram, fantasy football fellas on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. You can let us know which team you think is best. I, I, I hate to say it. But you did lose. I I, I, I don't think I actually don't think I drafted the best team here, Cameron. I really like your team, and it's only because you have Caleb and Marv. Dipping in and hindsight, twenty twenty, I think I should have taken Marv instead of Michael Pittman. But uh, again, just and maybe even Caleb Williams over Jameer Gibbs. I, it's a tough spot. The middle of the draft is a tough spot because you're not guaranteed anybody to mm-hmm. come back to you. So you yep. really just got to call your shots and build your team the way you want to. And this, I like to build my team this way. The problem is I, I probably missed out on both Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison because. Of it. No, I mean, it's tough in the middle because like, like you said, you have to wait kind of for what's fallen to you and that can either really, really work out well, right? If people are just skipping on players and you're just, everyone's falling in your lap or it's like, I got nothing here. So whereas kind of the ends of the draft, you're, you know, you know, you have that weight. So, you know, Hey, these players aren't going to follow me. So I got to, you know, go and grab my guy. Whereas the middle it's, it can get difficult of, you know, how, how do you game the board there? And I think we were, I, I will say this. I think, again, we were in a unique situation because rookies were going so late because there's no landing spots. Right. And once the draft happens, those guys are going to get pushed up Flying. draft boards. Right. And so some of these players that were going in like the fourth, fifth and sixth round, they're going to get pushed down a little bit because of those rookies and stuff. So again, it was a challenge for this one because again, there are no landing spots. Uh, so it's not like the middle rounds are completely, you know, difficult to tread but uh again you're looking at yeah you know it's the veterans that are on the verge of going out Mm. and you just you gotta draft them at some point and just hope that those guys are just gonna put up points because if they don't then it's then you're kind of sol for sure and even the ad mitchells the lad mcconkey is Ryan thomas is once they have land like you're you're talking fourth fifth round guys i think these guys in the ninth 12 14th Mm -hmm. round like these are the guys you're going to be looking at you know upwards of the the keenan allen range in the eighth round right the Mm -hmm. going ahead of jahan dots and Cortland sun once we know their landing spots 
problem is right now is I'd just rather take guys who I know are on, on NFL rosters in good mm -hmm. spots and, and have upside that I know about that, that, that that's where you have to find a balance and all that. But, but I think Cameron got steals of the draft and Caleb Williams and, and Marvin Harrison, um, you know, going at the, at the end of the third and beginning mm -hmm. of the fourth. So I, if, if we were to do this over again, I don't think either of us would let you have either of them, Cameron, but, uh, you're welcome. I mean, I, you're I'm welcome for the free win this round. I literally said I would have taken Marv instead of Olave had I remembered the rookies, but but you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this would be this would be an easy sweep for me. It, I'm afraid it will be. But thanks again for tuning in to this episode of the Fantasy Football Fellas Podcast. We're going to be back. We're going to start doing some rookie breakdowns in our next two episodes prior to the NFL draft. We'll be covering the pass catchers in one episode, quarterbacks and running backs in another. Everything that you need to know for your rookie drafts coming up after the NFL draft. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy. Make sure you give us a follow on the socials as well. FF fellas on Twitter, EFF fellas on Instagram, Fantasy Football fellas, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you do that same for the audio podcast as well. We appreciate all of your support. We will be back next week. Got plenty of other videos coming up as well. YouTube videos, shorts coming out almost every single day. So make sure you subscribe, turn on those notifications. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you all next week. Deuces. Deuces. Deuces.